talked for a while about their enemies being around them, and he talked about all the things they're facing and going through, and he talked about woe is me, and in Psalm 120 he talked about how he was for peace, but every time they spake they was for war, and he lifted up his eyes toward heaven from whence cometh his help, and he said he was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, and he's trying to encourage the children of Israel, no doubt they're in the middle of situations and circumstances of life, they all had their own issues and problems that felt like giving in and giving up and didn't want to know if it was worth going forth any further. But then the Lord, he begins to pray in the 123rd Psalm, asking the Lord, to, the Lord to dwell within heavens to help them, amen, and show mercy toward them. And then he says again, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, for we're exceedingly filled with contempt. And he said, our soul is exceedingly <clears throat> filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and, and with the contempt of the proud. He says, we've got some issues but in the 124th Psalm, he starts like this. He said, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When the wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. But he said, Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our souls escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And I read these verses and began to think on these verses. And, and he made the statement there multiple times that if it, if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been the Lord. In this psalm, the psalmist begins to look back on his life and the life of those around him. And, and no doubt there were many situations and many circumstances, many troubles and many trials. And, and you could you could talk to David and he could tell you, I was just a little shepherd boy out there in the field and finding my few sheep. And, and there was a lion that come one day and he took one of my sheep. And, and he said, as I sit there, I began to think, well, that was the Lord's lion that he took. And no doubt it broke the shepherd's heart, losing his sheep. And he went and killed that lion barehanded, and he pulled it out of the lion's mouth. And then there was a bear coming not long after that, and it took one of his sheep. And he sat there, and I mean, you're talking about a lion. He didn't have a gun, he didn't have anything big, didn't have anything exceeding, but he had the Lord, amen. It was one of the Lord's sheep, and he went. You, can you imagine going face to face with a lion and grabbing a hold of a lion and, and pulling its food out of its mouth? And then the bear come along. He did it the exact same way. And, and he went and destroyed the bear. And he took the sheep out of his mouth. And you think, well, that, that's, pretty issue. that's a pretty big issue. I remember reading about a giant about nine foot tall one time that defiled God, the army of God. And David went in the name of the Lord down to where that giant was and destroyed that giant. I remember reading about the sin of his son and how his son raped one of his daughters. His other son murdered one of his sons. And, and he took all his wives and concubines up on the top of the roof of the castle and he done all those things and, and we're reading about David's sin and how all the things David had went through in his life and, and David no doubt is thinking back about all the battles he had been through, all the troubles that he had faced, everything that he had been through in his life and, and I think there might have been a time in his mind he said, I think, well I've been through a lot and, and this and another but David's not looking back in discouragement or in defeat but he's looking back simply I think in this verses at the victory that the Lord had given, no doubt the situation hurt, no doubt out the circumstance hurt. David didn't say, Lord, would you give me another battle? Lord, would you take another one of my children? Lord, would you break my heart? Lord, would you break my home? Lord, would you cause me more problems? He wasn't saying any of those things. He was looking back and he said, boy, it was bad and it was rough and it was hard. But I think what he's simply saying, as bad as it was and as sad as it was, boy, I'm glad God was there during my troubled times. And if it had not been for him, I'd have never got through. If it hadn't have been for him, I would have never got through it. It would have been much worse than it was if it hadn't been for him. Notice if the Lord hadn't been there and hadn't been on my side or on our side. Not only was God there, but he was on our side. Why is it when those troubles and trials come, God feels like he's so far away? But David said, not only was he there, but he was on my side. He hadn't failed me. He hadn't forsaken me. He hadn't abandoned me. He hadn't went to another direction. He hadn't done all that. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying our troubles and our trials are bad enough. But imagine if he was facing them alone. Imagine if he was facing them without the Lord. Or imagine this, if you would. 
Imagine if he was on the other side of the battle line. Imagine if he was on the side of the Philistines, if he was on the side of the world, and he wasn't only standing against God's army, but you were standing against the God of that army. That would be even worse, wouldn't it? The Bible reads, if, it, if, not, if God were not for us, if God's for us, who can be against us? Let's change that around for just a minute, for, for mind's sake, not for scriptural sake. If God be against us tonight, who could be for him? I'm an easy target. I'm easily defeated in and of myself. It wouldn't take a whole lot. But if God's standing there in front of you, and we read about the God of the Bible, what he's done throughout the Bible, and you saw what he's done in your life, and the things he's brought you through and helped you with, if you were standing face to face against God, how's that going to turn out? Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord and crippled him up for the rest of his life. But if God were not for us, who would be against us? I want to look just a couple of simple thoughts right quick tonight. We'll be done. I would have thought if not, if, not, if, if not for the Lord, I'll get my tongue out of the roof of my mouth in a minute. If not for the Lord. Notice if it wasn't for the Lord, there wouldn't be any help in the midst of our Bible. Preacher, what are you talking about? Look at verses 1 through 3. He said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, now may Israel say, he said, it had been totally different. It was bad enough already. But then he said in verse number 2, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. He said it wouldn't even been a fight. It wouldn't even been a battle. It would have been one of them sports bloopers you see on TV. You get punched in the face and it's over and you're down for the count before the bell even rings type of deal. He said it would have already been over. He said when their wrath was kindled against us, he said they just get mad at us and destroy us. We wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be a war by parade. He said, when men rose up against us, they'd swallow us up quick. I began to think about, we face a lot of things in this life, and they're too hard for us. But there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. I began to think about a lot of the situations and circumstances that we face. A lot of them's too big for us. You say, Lord, I can't bear it. Lord, I can't handle it. That's good. He knows how much you can bear. And he's not going to put more upon you than you can. But he's faithful to step in and help out. If it wasn't for the Lord, there'd be no help in the midst of our battle. That situation, that circumstance, that thing you're dealing with, that you're going through, that's breaking your heart, your home, that's tearing you apart, as bad as it is, imagine going through it without God. I don't understand how people do it. I don't understand how they go down to the cemetery and lay their loved ones down with no hope of heaven. With no, with no idea of peace or joy and this and another. No wonder the drugs and the alcohol or rappers are. They've got to do something to, to try to take away their feelings and their emotions. They've got to have some kind of pill or something to help them through their situation. And I'm glad we've got the gospel, amen. We've got the blessed word of God. We've got the promises of his peace and his joy promises us no matter what comes against us that we're going to prosper. You can read these other verses that David's wrote down through here. And in, in Psalm 121, verse number 7, he said, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You know what David said? No matter what we're facing or going through, God's got this. God's going to take care of this. God's in control. That's easy to say on a good day. Mm -hmm. Now when Cammie's wrote and sang that song which y'all sang here sometimes, the God on the mountain, he's still the God in the valley. Mm -hmm. The God of the good times, he's still the God in the bad times. The God of the daytime, he's God in the night. The God when the sun shines, he's still God when it's storm. The God when it's hot, he's still God when it's cold. He's still God. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for him, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. Our troubles and trials would leave us defeated and discouraged. We see that real quick. He said, then they would swallow us up quick. They'd swallow us up quick. He said, it'd be over. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying we'd be helpless in our times of trouble. A lot of times we feel helpless anyway. But I'm glad there's a very present help, even in our times of trouble. He ever lives just to make intercession for you and I. He ever lives just to look over you and to take care of you and I. We know that Job said, man is born a woman's but a few days and full of trouble. But we know that there's very present help in the midst of our trouble. We know we've got somewhere we can run to, somewhere we can go. I was reading earlier about those conies over there. Everything would get after them. It was bigger than them. It didn't take much to destroy them, but they could run to the rock. 
I'm glad there's a rock tonight. There's a cheap cornerstone, amen, that you and I can get to. We've got a refuge. We've got a resting place. We've got a place tonight we can run to, a place tonight we can make it to, and everything's fine. Many times we face battles, physical, spiritual, mental, financial. There's all sorts of battles in this life. And I'm glad we, just like David, can make it through just trust in the name of the Lord. Do you remember all those things going on during the time of that giant? When he stood there before the army of Israel and they tempted him and, and he mocked them and their God and everything else and said and done all those things and the greatest army in the Bible standing there scared to death and, and they won't go down there because of the size of the man. They forgot about the size of their God. They forgot who had brought them to that place, who took care of them that far. And now they're defeated. You know what happens to us? We see our situation. We see our circumstance. We see a battle out there. And we give in and we give up before we ever get to the fight. David yeah. come and let out a shout. David was ready when he got there to encourage and to help. Remind them that there was benefits and there was blessings for those that would go. The king said, hey, I'll give my daughter and I'll bring him into the palace and I'll do all these things and, and I'll do every bit of this stuff for the man that slays that giant. God promises to bless those that are faithful. But when it came time for him to go down there and face that giant, he said, hey, I'll go. He said, he's running down my family, he's running down my friends, he's beating up my country, he's running down my God, he's done all these things. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who does he think he is? And he starts down that direction. Saul, the king, says, hey, wait a minute, I'll give you some armor, I'll give you this, and I'll give you that. And they said, I ain't tried that. He took what he knew. I'm glad I know that God works. I'm glad I know the Spirit of God's faith when He'll take care of me, no matter how deep the valley is, no matter how hard the situation is. I'm glad He'll take care of us. And, and David willingly walked down into a valley. A lot of us scared to death of the valleys and the low times in life. And, and David willingly walked down in that valley, reached down and picked up those five smooth stones and, and took his slingshot and headed across that way. When he got over there, that giant laughed at him and he mocked him. And, and he said, hey, he said, oh, you can send out some little old dog. He said, I'll destroy him in a matter of seconds. That's what the devil does. That's what the world does. But David said, you come to me with a spear and a, and a shield. You come with all those things. But how did he come? He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. You know what he said? He said, I can't beat you on my own. I can't take care of this by myself, but the Lord can. Amen. The God that I serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he's faithful to take care of my situation. It's bigger than I can handle. It's more than I can do. But I'm glad I can put the weight upon him. I can cast my cares upon him, knowing that he cares for me, and he'll take care of my problem. If not for the Lord, there wouldn't be any help in the midst of our battle. If not for the Lord, there wouldn't be any victory. It would all be defeat and discouragement. But I'm glad he's given us victories, aren't you? Preacher, what's victory tonight? How are we going to find victory tonight? If you're ever going to find victory in this world, he said faith brings the victory. Yeah. Faith's going to give you the victory tonight. Just simply trusting in God, not being the best, not being the greatest, not being something big or, or anything of that nature, but simply putting your faith and your trust in God will bring you victory in your situation, your circumstance, in the midst of your battle. The Bible declared, many are the afflictions of the righteous. So there's a lot of trouble. And I'm glad the verse didn't end there, aren't you? He said, but the Lord shall deliver them from them all. Whatever you're facing or going through, God's able to deliver you from if you just put your trust in. Not only without the Lord, there wouldn't be any help in the midst of battle. Without the Lord, there wouldn't be any hope in the midst of the storm. Preacher, what are you talking about? There wouldn't be any hope when, it, when the storm started, when everything started coming down on you. You'd be hopeless. Not only did he say that he swallowed us up quickly, verse number four, he said, then the waters had overwhelmed us. We're overwhelmed a lot of times. It didn't take, we've already said, a lot of things are bigger than us, a lot of things are stronger than us, a lot of things are more than we can handle. They overwhelmed us. He said, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. It would have taken our lives, what he said, so we would have died in the storm. My favorite chapter in the Bible, Acts chapter number 27, they'd been warned, hey, the fast has already passed. It's already too late to sail, but they believed more of the centurion and the captain of the ship, and they believed the man of God and the word of God, and they went their own direction, and the winds became contrary, and that Eurachlodon come, and it started tossing the ship to and fro. Hey, the, ship, the storm came upon the ship, and it was beaten, it was battered in 14 days, no sun, no moon, no stars and they were fearing for their own life at that point in time you know what, they realized they messed up 
They realized they'd make, made a mistake. The very reason they were sailing was those goods on board. They was going to take them to another port and sail them in another harbor. But they started throwing those things overboard. They started lightening the ship. They said, hey, if we get rid of this and get rid of that, it might make it better. A lot of people now start getting religious when trouble comes. Let 9-11 come and the church starts filling up. And, and people say, oh, would you pray? And they start doing this and they start doing that. But then when the world falls apart and the ship starts sinking, they said, all oh, hope that we should be saved was then gone. But I'm glad when all hopes about God helps on the way. Yeah. Preacher, what do you mean? It was at that point, right after they said all hope that we should be saved was lost, that Paul come out of the lower parts of the ship and walked right there in their midst and God had given them a message to preach. And, and he told them, fear not and be of good cheer. Well, that sounds goofy, doesn't it? Hey, the ship's going down. The storm's coming. We're already sinking. We're all going to drown. We're all going to die. We ain't got any help. We ain't got any hope. The storm's bigger we can deal with. He said, be of good cheer. For the angel of the Lord has stood by me this night. Whom I am and whom I serve. He said, there'll be loss and no lives on this ship. You know what? When the storm's out of your control, it's still in God. Yeah. When your situation's more than you can handle, God's still in control. He said, the water's that overwhelming. He said, the stream had already gone over our soul. It's broken. It's defeated. It's discouraged. It's, the storms are more than we can bear. They take our peace. They take our joy. If you're not careful, they'll even take your life. If we try to bear them alone, we'd be hopeful. But I'm glad we've got a blessed hope. In the world. Yeah. If not for the Lord. I want you to sit here and look back. Don't do it too long on your life. I want you to look at your greatest challenge. At your darkest hour, how bad that it was. It scarred you, it's hindered you, it hurt you. But I want you to see the victory that God gave you and the peace that He gave you coming through that. I want you to see that. You look back at Job, and we see him losing all of his, all of his earthly substance, if you will. We see him losing his children. He ain't got any money. All of his men's servants is gone. His home's gone. Everything's gone as far as the world's concerned. But his wife said, hey, just curse God and die. But he said, the Lord give us, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I don't have all the worldly stuff anymore. But I've got a God that's out of this world that's able to take care of me. Job made a statement, as bad as all that thing had been, he said, the thing that I fear the most has come upon me. But then you'll read, read the first 41 chapters of the book of Job, how bad that it was. But then read chapter 42 when God started giving back, when God started blessing. God gave him more than he ever had. Why? Because he came out faithful through the trial. Not only did God protect him, sure he's covered in bulls, sure it's bad and hard. And I'm not lighting up and I'm not asking for the trials of Job tonight. I'm not asking for all those things, but I'm telling you, God's faithful no matter where you are. But imagine for a poor old Job, if it hadn't been for the Lord, he'd never made it through. But Job still praised God. Job was ready to leave this world just go on to heaven, amen. He knew that the Lord Jesus was coming. He knew that he was going to die. He knew that he was going to be buried. He knew the skin worms was going to destroy his flesh, but he knew he was going to see God in the flesh. He said, all the appointed days of my time, he said, I've been waiting for my change to come. He said, I know it's the latter days so his feet stand upon the Mount of Olives. He had something he could trust in, even in the midst of a storm. <laughs> Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying without the Lord, there wouldn't be any help in the Bible. Without the Lord, there'd be no hope in our storm. And without the Lord, there'd be no home for the soul in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. You read verses 7 and 8, he said, our souls escape. Our soul, he didn't say our life, he didn't say this. He said our soul, the very thing that God saves, the very things that God keeps. He said our souls escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we're escaped as the snare is broken. You know what that means? It means that snare can't bind you up anymore. I'm glad he and the Son is made free. is free indeed. Amen. I'm glad he's loosed us, and he's let us go like Lazarus over there. Even though we were dead in trespasses and sins, I'm glad he's called us by name. I'm glad he's rolled the stone away. I'm glad he's took off the old grave clothes, and he's got some new clothes for you and I. We're going to be likened and fashioned unto him and clothed in white. Pure and spotless. He said, Our souls escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. And then notice this in verse 8 Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. He said, Just in the name. There's power just in the name. Just in 
knowing who he is. Notice that capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord God Jehovah. The creator of all things, the one that took nothing and made everything that you and I see. The one that's more than enough, the one that's more than sufficient, the one that found us, the one that keeps us, the one that saved us, the one that sustains us, the one that supplies for us. He said, our hope is simply in the name of the Lord. Right. And then he said, oh yeah, he also made the heaven and the earth. In case you forgot. See, a lot of times we get in situations and circumstances and we feel like there ain't going to help. We feel like we're stuck. You ever felt like you're just locked in a cage? What was that movie years ago? Probably ain't fit to watch. I ain't seen it a long time. It's going to hold against the ground all day. That old boy was the same day over and over and over and over and over. It just seemed like you couldn't get away from it. A lot of times we feel like we're stuck there. feel like we're helpless. feel like we're hopeless. feel like we're alone. But he said, there's help even in the name of the Lord. Just in his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess the glory of the Father. Just in his name. You see, you and I were in bondage. We were locked up in sin. We couldn't get ourselves loose. We couldn't escape on our own. We were dead and in, in sin and in trespasses, and we were headed to hell. And I'm glad Jesus came and broke the snare on Calvary, aren't yeah. you? That veil was locked. that veil was was tied. It was sealed. You and I couldn't get through it. Gentile dogs, we couldn't even get into that place. But I'm glad he read it from top to bottom. He came to his own, his own received him not, but as many received him, gave him power to become the sons of God, even them who believed on his name. And so Gentile dogs was grafted in as a wild olive branch, amen. He made a way for you and I. Why? Because he loved sinners. He paid our sin debt and he opened the door to heaven. Now we have a home. We're not helpless. We're not hopeless. And we're not homeless anymore. Preacher, what do you say that I'm saying? If not for the Lord, it'd be far worse. The statement's been made many times. He makes the good times better. But he makes the bad times better. You don't have to look. You, can look. you don't have to look real far to see issues. You don't have to look real far to see problems. And I'm glad we don't have to look very far. If we look with our spiritual eye, we can see the hand of God, and we can see His grace, and we can see His mercy. And He's given us the help and the hope, and He's going to take good care of us until we get home. If not for the Lord, we'd be helpless, hopeless, and homeless in hell. Yeah. But I'm glad for Him tonight, aren't you? I think that, I, I think that was a wonderful message that, that David was writing there to the children of Israel. He said, sure, we're, we're hurting. Sure, we're burdened. Sure, we're in trouble. Sure, sure, it's a bad place to be in. He said, but we're in good hands when we're in the hands of God. Jesus told his disciples, he said, all the Father gave me. He said, I've never lost one. You know what? You're not going to be the first. When he said never, that was in all of eternity because he was looking at the first day all the way to the last day. He's never lost one. He's never lost one. He's never failed one. He's never come short one time. He's never not been more than enough. His grace has always been sufficient. So no matter where we are, what we're facing and going through, he's enough. He's enough. I got to thinking that we have the help and the hope that we need tonight. We do in the Lord. We just trust in his name. Do we have a, a home tonight? We do tonight if we trust in his name. I say tonight, if it had not been for the Lord, you imagine how bad it would be. I don't know what you're facing or what you're going through tonight, but he does. He does. If God be for us, it would be against us. You've got help tonight. If you need it, why don't you come?